Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, your guide to art, culture and tourism here in Tokyo and throughout Japan. I'm Stuart Monroe and around this time each Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I'll bring a selection of local news and views. On today's episode, we visit an observatory in Kagoshima. But first, gold. Japan has resubmitted the mining complex on Sado Island, off the coast of Niigata, to the UNESCO World Heritage List, an application that has further angered South Korea. The mine operated for nearly 400 years and was once the world's largest gold producer, before closing in 1989. Yet South Korea claims the site is linked to wartime forced labour during Japan's colonisation of the Korean Peninsula from 1910 to 1945. Keiko Nagaoka, the Minister of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology, outlined the mine's cultural worth, explained they demonstrate the use of industrial technology used throughout the Edo period from 1603 to 1868 but shied away from criticism, hoping the international community would embrace the application submitted last Thursday for the site to be added to the list by 2024 at the earliest. History surrounding part of the complex, namely the Nishimikawa Plaza gold mine, has a troubled history though, possibly one reason why the previous application last February fell short. If the Japanese government's initiative goes as planned, UNESCO's advisory body will survey the site to determine whether it's worthy of being added to the list and then the World Heritage Committee should reach its decision this summer. As border restrictions continue to ease, the Japanese sightseeing operator Hato Bus resumed Chinese language tours on a trial basis last weekend, hoping to revive every tour by this April. Hato, which operates in the Greater Tokyo area, is restarting its foreign language bus tours after almost three years, anticipating a surge in overseas tourism especially with yesterday marking the start of the Lunar New Year. The tour operator drew in 64,000 people in 2019, and while suspending operations in April 2020, the company still retains about 40 multilingual bus guides, which is roughly 60% of the staff employed before the pandemic. And finally, Japanese wheelchair tennis player Shingo Kunieda has announced his intention to retire from professional tennis. The 38-year-old Paralympian who won gold at the Tokyo Olympics in 2021, completed his career Grand Slam by winning Wimbledon last July, a feat that some believe justifies Kunieda's status as the greatest male wheelchair player of all time. Researchers last week in Scuba City, one hour north east of Tokyo, announced they had developed a sheet of pure black that can absorb 99.98% of visible light making it the blackest ever black also capable of being handled. Light absorbing material made from carbon already exists, but is too fragile to touch, making any application near impossible. In 2019, another research team created a black using carbon pigments able to absorb 99.65% of light. This time, however, researchers turned to black resin refined from the cashew nut, often used in place of lacquer, absorbing 99.98% of light, surpassing the 2019 version. The team hopes this development will aid the optics industry and camera lenses. For now though, their achievement hits the research community worldwide, with news of their latest discovery added to the January 13th edition of the US Journal of Science Advances. The results of this year's JIA 25 Year Award are due to be announced later this week, Each year, the Japan Institute of Architects rewards architecture that's contributed to both the community and environment for the past 25 years. And with that image of pitch black in mind, one of this year's shortlisted buildings is by the architect Takasaki Masaharu, an astronomical telescope and observatory in Kagoshima, 
built in 1995, called the Kihoku Tenkyukan. Its remote location was chosen to cut the observatory off from the rest of the island, if not the world, rooting it to the land, then connecting it with the cosmos. And yet this half-empty concrete mass became an oddity within the volcanic landscape of Kagoshima and Kyushu. A decade ago, social media breathed new life into the observatory, transforming the mass into a museum, now the second most popular attraction to the Sakurajima volcano and hot springs nearby. Other buildings designed by Takasaki employ ingenious solutions to the problem of sustainability within the city. His Zero House, for example, was built without using a single nail. And while the Tenkyu can look skyward, his Tenchi House in Nagoya is almost a single room, a two-storey wooden house with a complex arrangement of light both natural and artificial, entering through a spiral stairwell, with mirrors at the top, four periscopic light tubes, stained glass and all manner of other openings. Back at the observatory, the Kihoku Tenkyu can awaits its place in this year's JIA 25 Year Award shortlist, and regardless of whether it wins or not, its odd blend of postmodernism and metabolism will no doubt bring a wry smile to anyone who visits there this coming spring. That's it for this episode of Notebook. Be sure to check in on Wednesday, January the 25th. If you enjoyed this or any of the episodes throughout 2022, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts or spread the word online. You can also email the Notebook team, notebook.podcast at gmail.com with thoughts of future episodes. Until next time though, thanks for listening. This has been Notebook.